A few weeks ago, I got a message from my buddy, Andrew. Andrew runs a power washing business, so he's very into restoring old stuff. And he said that he had this old Shea Lounge. Shea, Shea's Lounge? Shea, Shea Long? So the original phrase was Shea's Long, but the spelling and the pronunciation have been modified to be more pronounceable, I suppose, in English, to become Shea's Lounge. So Andrew had this old Shea's Lounge that was breaking down super dirty. It was kind of past its useful life, but he had seen my trash to treasure videos, so he wanted to give it to me so I could transform it into something else. Sodium hydroxide here. All right. I think it's otherwise known as lye, and we are gonna apply this to the chaise. It's gonna work on all the organic buildup and all the gray fibers. So if you were to try, we let this dry, yep. try and stain it. Hydroxide we put on, it's gonna wanna break down the stain you're just trying to apply, right? So we wanna get the wood back to neutral. So by using an acid, we're gonna neutralize everything that's ah, still in the wood yeah. itself. And we've also darkened the wood by putting on the hydroxide as well. So this is gonna brighten it up and uh, we'll make it even more presentable. Uh. So the power washing took about an hour. I'm keeping track of all the time I spent on this project. So at the end, when we sell the finished piece, I can calculate how much I made per hour. And now it's ready to take apart. Let's do it. So since this thing is already kind of falling apart, it should be pretty easy to take apart. Whoops. Oh boy, this thing is in a rough shape. All right. So this wood is in pretty rough shape to the point where I think I just need to get rid of most of the structure. This guy cannot do anything with that. But I think I can salvage the slats. Let's play in these bad boys. So I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but Andrew said that all of this wood is teak. And I think he's right. This is so beautiful. Check that out. Next step, trim the edges. Let's do it. So I had this idea for a piece of furniture that involves cutting every single one of these into triangles. Once we do this, there's no going back, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Let's do it. All right, let's see how much space these take up. Ooh, these look nice. That's a pretty nice sized coffee table. Yeah, awesome. So I can use this piece of three quarter inch plywood as a backer board. I designed this super simple 3D printed jig to evenly space the triangles across the backer board. This only took around 15 minutes to design, but I think this is gonna be absolutely key to building this table. So I'll start in the center of the board. So the triangles fit perfectly in there and I made sure to add enough space so that they don't get stuck. Put on a few dots of super glue and a dot of wood glue. Spray some activator on the plywood and then we can press that into place. Now we can take this off, shift it over, and continue the tessellation. Let's do it. So I had almost exactly enough triangles to make this hexagon. 
these pieces here, like 20-ish triangles, is all I had left. Next step, I wanna trim off the excess plywood, but I also want to even up the edges. Even though we use that 3D printed jig, we have a little bit of accumulated air around the edges, but by using my track saw, I can make each edge perfectly straight. Let's do it. There we go. So I wanna fill the space between all of the triangles with resin, as well as make a resin border around the entire hexagon. And that means we need to make a mold. Let's do it. So I was just about to seal the mold with silicone and I was pumping and pumping in my caulking gun and nothing was coming out the tip. And I realized that the back exploded. <laughs> Look at this. Delicious. Just punched right through the back. Now I got a nice goopy caulking gun. So I uh, guess we're spreading it the old fashioned way. <laughs> Yuck. I brought the mold inside so that the silicone would cure and 24 hours later, we're ready to pour some epoxy. I'm gonna be using Total Boat Thick Set. This is a clear casting epoxy. A lot of people use this for river tables, so I think it should be perfect for this coffee table. And shout out to Total Boat for sponsoring this video. I'm very excited to use this stuff. So this resin is a three to one mix ratio. I'm not really sure how much I'm gonna use for this first pour, but I don't know, I'll try up to, I'll try up to the three line to start. Part A up to the bottom three line, and part B up to the top three line. Ooh, this is a lot less viscous. So I got this white pigment, and I think I only need to add a couple drops. So I got this giant syringe to get the epoxy between all of the triangles. I'm hoping this makes the application nice and easy and this minimizes the cleanup that we have to do later. So we got all that. I think we can start spilling over into the sides. I gotta say, this is using a surprising amount of epoxy so far. I did not expect it would take all of this. Ooh, this is when I need to start watching for leaks. This is when it's gonna start happening. My original plan was to do two coats. I think, realistically, we might just end up doing three. I think that's it. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh boy. So the resin has been curing for about eight hours, and now I got Eden with me to help with the second coat. Let's do it. Milking the cow. Milking the cow. <laughs> All right, let's pour this resin. Let's do it. Stop. Take a long Here, walk. Put the other the end beach. in there. What? All right, really pull the trigger though. Okay, I think it's mixed. No, you have to mix it a lot longer. Oh my god, you didn't tell me this was gonna be an arm workout. Oh, no. don't. Okay, <laughs> careful. You can go faster. I want it to be pretty opaque, so. Nice. Excuse me. Definitely yeah. gonna include that in the video. <laughs> oh my god, you did not tell me I was gonna have an arm workout tonight. You don't need to like do it super fast. You can do it slowly. <laughs> like, we'll <laughs> suck it up as fast as possible. So, like making a cake? Um, not really. It's kind of challenging. I'm hearing a lot of uh, complaining. Sorry, you're right. I'm <laughs> taking off my negative hat <laughs> and I'm putting on my positive hat. When I see a challenge, I think learn an opportunity. There we go. You know, some people might think you have to go as fast as you possibly can when uh, suctioning up epoxy, but slow and steady wins the race. Life is not a race. It is a journey. 
in which there are many races put together. <laughs> <laughs> what? It is like a comically large syringe. Oh, Abby in the background. Hello. She's so tired. Nice. You are so aggressive. <laughs> that was wet. That was the worst. That was wet. All right, is that it for this batch? Yeah, can we do it again? No, we have to let this cure. If we do too much, it'll go exothermic, which means it'll generate a ton of heat and bubble and ruin it. So we can do another one tomorrow, though. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for including me in this fun process. Oh my God, look at my hands. It's 12 hours later, and I can see now that we did have a bit of leakage but luckily they are very small. And hopefully the epoxy that leaked out sealed those gaps. So we should be good to go for our third pour. Let's do it. And I have a feeling we're gonna need to do a fourth pour because ah, this, this mold just takes way more epoxy than I anticipated. All right, with that fart, <laughs> that is the last of this pour. And I guess we're definitely gonna have to do a fourth pour. All right, here we go. Pour number four. Or is this five? I'm kind of starting to lose track at this point. It's gonna have to be one more pour. We are not quite at the top. Two days later, another kit of Total Boat Fix had arrived. So we're ready for the fifth, and I hope the final pour. This final coat of epoxy will go over top of the wood, and I don't want these knot holes getting filled with white. So before pouring the epoxy, I'm gonna fill each knot hole with a bit of super glue so they stay nice and clear. And because we're pouring up over the top of the wood anyway, I'm not even gonna bother using the syringe. <laughs> I don't think we had to use this in the first place. But, you know, you live and you learn. Part of me is thinking like, what have I done? After I put in all that work of carefully putting the epoxy in between the triangles, but I know this is the right decision. Eden, can you get me like a piece of cardboard or plastic? <laughs> Could you cut it in half so it has a flat face? Thank you. Oh my gosh, is this not gonna be enough? I think we did it. <laughs> we got the perfect amount of epoxy in there. Awesome. So it's been four days since we poured that last coat of epoxy. Let's demold this thing. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oop. Yes, sir. It's a little stuck. Oh, there we go. All right. Now the part that I'm most nervous about, separating this from the bottom. Um, how are we gonna do this? If only I could like flex this board and pop it off. Nothing. This feels risky, but I feel like it's the only thing we can really do. Oh, ha, it's already separating. I can see it, it's flexing. Oh my gosh, I think this might actually be not that bad. Yes, sir. Oh, I knew it! I just needed that bit of flexion. Let's go! Ugh. Yes! Ha-ha! So the next step is to flatten this thing on my router sled. This is essentially a big carbide bit in a router on a giant Etch-a-Sketch that will allow us to make each surface perfectly flat. We want to flatten both sides, so I'm going to start on the bottom. Ow! Oh, that's so sharp. Yikes. Ooh, okay, I need a Band-Aid. Be careful with the sharp edges of epoxy. They can, uh, I'm not gonna show you this, but they'll make you bleed. There we go, one flat side. I'm guessing we had a sag in the center of our mold or the edges lifted up a little bit. That's why we have this sort of bullseye pattern. <laughs> Woo. 
look at that. So for the next step, I'm gonna use my track saw to trim off the edges so I have an even three quarter inch border all the way around. Let's do it. Ah, oh, that even border. So I have spent so much time trying to figure out what I want to do for the base for this table. I looked at a lot of metal legs online, but none of them seemed right. I feel like this thing needs some light colored legs. There's a lot of black steel legs online, but that just doesn't seem like the right look. So I went to my local sawmill and I picked up 11 board feet of two inch thick hard maple. I know board feet is a weird measurement. So these pieces are six and three quarter inches wide, two inches thick, 10 feet long cut into two pieces. This is some beautiful wood, but it is rough cut. So first things first, we gotta plane this stuff down. Now I do have a planer, but the cool thing about the router sled is that you can also use it to plane wood. Let's do it. Look at that beautiful hard maple. I don't know if that was any faster than planing, but definitely ended up with a better surface finish. This feels like it's already sanded up to 120 grit. Well, I see why they call it hard maple because this wood was incredibly difficult to work with, but we got them built and I think these are gonna look awesome. Next step is everyone's favorite part of a woodworking project. I'm an I'm an I'm an so I got all the pieces sanded up to 320 grit. I water popped the grain and before I do the final sanding, I want to add my branding to the bottom. Let's do it. All right, let's do this. One chance. Woo! For a finishing touch, I wanna to add a bevel to the top and bottom edges of the table. Let's do it. Oh, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> this is why I need a bigger workshop. All right, these legs were a lot more challenging than I expected, but we got it. Let's get it. All right, so we are finally ready for finish. I'm gonna be using Rubio Monocoat. This is a single coat oil-based finish. I've never used this stuff before, but I have heard great things. Only problem is this stuff is expensive and it comes with very specific application instructions. If there is any dust on your wood, the oil will bond with that dust instead of the wood and you'll get this grit on the surface. So I cleaned off everything super well with mineral spirits. I finished it off with a microfiber cloth. So I think we're good to go. Let's do it. So the coffee table is done and now it is time to actually sell this thing. First things first, let's talk material costs. So for the base of the table, we used about $40 worth of three quarter inch plywood, 
$10 worth of glue. We ruined that whole tube of silicone caulk. So the whole $10 worth of that is going in the materials. $107 worth of total boat thick set epoxy. That syringe was unusable after three coats of epoxy. So the full $16 of that is getting thrown in the material cost. We used half of that maple for the leg. So that's $51 and 77 cents. Threaded inserts were $2.50, $4 worth of boats. Rubio Monocoat is an expensive finish. The full can is $115. We used about a third, so that's $38.33. And then for various consumables like gloves, paper towels, sandpaper, I'll throw in another $7. I took some nice photos in my living room and wrote up a social media post that took about an hour. That brings our total time spent on this project to 18 hours and 30 minutes. Now, I am really happy with how this table came out. Considering the labor and the quality of the finish, I think that $2,000 Canadian or 1500 US is a fair price for that table. And that gives us an hourly rate of $92.60. <sighs> Now, I really don't want to ship this thing. It's so big that I should probably crate it up if I were to send it through a courier service. That will be expensive, and I'm nervous that it would get damaged in transit. I'm a big proponent of trying new things, but honestly, there are so many people that live in the greater Toronto area that I think I can sell it locally. In the post, I limited it to Simcoe County, York Region, and the greater Toronto area. That's like a 200 kilometer radius of where I live. I made the post about an hour ago. It is getting a ton of positive response. People love the way that this table looks, but that is a far cry from actually buying it. So we'll see how it goes and we'll reevaluate the strategy if we need to. But for now, all we can do is wait. For the first three days, I wasn't getting any serious offers. I tried relisting the item. I also posted it on Facebook Marketplace, but still nothing. But then I got an idea. My short form vertical videos have been getting a lot of views recently. That is a huge group of people who might be interested in buying this table. So I sat down and I made a short vertical video to show this thing off. Why does this handmade coffee table cost $2,000? Let me break it down. This took me 18 and a half hours to build and $286 in materials. That gives an hourly rate of $92, which goes into paying overhead like rent, electricity, and tool depreciation, as well as a wage for the person who built it. That is me, I built it. But a table is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So if you wanna buy this table, but you think the price is too high, make me an offer. I must have gotten six offers within 24 hours of posting that video. The first one I got was a comment on Facebook. This guy Raymond wanted to ask if it would be possible to ship to California. Now I know, I know, I said I didn't want to ship this thing. But I started thinking about David Shaw from the Northern Joinery who I interviewed in a YouTube video and how he ships his things all over the world. So I thought, you know, I should reach out to David and see if I can get connected with his shipping guy. So I called them up. Apparently, I can ship this thing in pieces to Southern California for about 200 bucks US. Way less than I expected, and the more I talked to him, the more I realized that it wasn't actually a big deal. I can package up the top in a cardboard shipping box with a ton of padding, I'll put the legs in a separate box, and it'll be no problem. And Raymond travels the US in his RV. So he said, let me put down a deposit and I'll let you know the next time I'm in San Diego, and you can ship it to me then. I can take my time packaging this up nice. I don't have to rush. Raymond, thank you. And I think this is a very interesting lesson. So many people are making short form content now and in developing these large audiences, there's a lot that you can do. Something to keep in mind if you're trying to make something to sell. So I'll post when I ship this off to Raymond. And if you wanna see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can gain exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page by supporting this channel on Patreon. I wanna give a special shout out to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. I don't wanna disturb Penny, she's just chilling. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.